will rejoice and be glad in it. You don't mind standing to your feet for the reading of our morning scripture and prayer. Turn with me, if you will, to Psalm 67. Psalm 67, starting at verse 5. Psalms 67 and verse 5. It says, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. I guess I need to do a little teaching real quick. I need to do a little teaching. Uh, the scripture says, let the people praise thee. Oh God, let all the people praise thee. And what you may not have recognized is that in the scripture, it says, when all the people praise thee, something is going to happen to the earth. It says that the earth shall yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. And then it says, God shall bless us. He doesn't say that twice, and he must really want to bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear yeah. him. Lord have mercy. If you want to see a change in the earth, today is a great day to start praising and blessing the Lord. We ain't going to complain about what's going on in the world no more. We're just going to bless the Lord. If you bless the Lord, he said, I'll do something about the earth. He ain't trying to change the earth. He's trying to change you. Lord have mercy, Jesus. So all of you that came this morning, if you got a little quietness in you, just put that quietness out because we're ready to praise the Lord up in here. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another expression of your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that you have a group of people here at the Macedonia Church who have committed themselves to blessing your name today. We know that if we bless your name, you're going to cause an increase in the earth realm. You're going to change some things in the earth realm. And we want to be earth changers today with our praise. So now, Lord, we invite you into this place. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, save souls today. Lord, change lives and beat knees. Do what only you can do and be pleased with our praise. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You don't mind clapping your hands right there as we get ready for Chosen Generation Praise team to minister to us.
be surprised. I might ask for a little bit more of that later. Oh, my God. Praise God. Wow. Rock of Ages. That is old, old school right there. And they done brought that thing all we need. Oh, my God. I hide myself in thee. God, my, my, my. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. At this time, at this time, we want to uh, take time and welcome our guests. If you are a guest of the uh, Macedonia Church for the first time or the first time in a long time, please stand. So allow us to recognize and love on you for Amen. 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 I am Pastor Bobby McKenzie, the senior pastor of the Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church. And please let me introduce you to my wife and the first lady of Macedonia, Ms. Justine McKenzie. And I want to introduce you to the greatest church on this side of heaven. Our church family, the Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church. And so we welcome you to the worship experience here at the Macedonia Church. Uh, we pray that uh, it's not your last time, even if it's your first time in a long time. For those of you who are first-time guests, we certainly, certainly welcome you. And if I get a chance and if you give me the privilege, I would love to shake your hand and to give you a hug and to personally welcome you. We believe that God has not... Uh, made a mistake by you being here this morning. It is preordained that you were to be here at the Macedonia Church on September the 24th, 2017. And we believe that a word from on high has been delivered just for you. We didn't need Federal Express. We didn't need UPS. We didn't even need the U.S. Postal Service. We have God himself delivering his word through his man of God to you. Special delivery. And so we believe that it will be on time and it will meet you right at your point of need. Yeah. And as soon as you get your package and you open it up, it's okay in this church to say amen. amen. So Macedonia, at this time, would you please stand, greet our guests, and greet one another.
If you are a member of Macedonia and would like a free ticket, please see Brother Louis Philip Atkins, please. Thank you. Have a great service. Amen, amen. So we remember our NAACP uh, Freedom Banquet, and um, I believe those tickets will be first come, first served, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, Brother Philip, uh, let me not know, you, you know, she said Louis Agnes, I don't know who Louis. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Brother Philip, uh, see you, Brother Philip, uh, when you get a chance. Um, I want to um, let the congregation know, first and foremost, uh, uh, our condolences as a church family uh, to uh, Brother Woody Wilson and the entire Wilson family yeah. and the home yeah. of uh, his sister, Sister Karen yeah. Wilson. And so, uh, Brother Woody, know that as a church family, uh, we have you in our prayers lifted up. And if there's anything else we can do for you to bring comfort to you at this time, let us know. Um, that service uh, will be held on Friday, September the 30th at uh, J. Kevin Tia's funeral home at 1 p.m. And I will be the preacher for that occasion. Amen. And so, um, just so you know, that is at J. Kevin Tidd's funeral home. And it's at 1 p.m. on, uh, not Friday, I'm sorry, Saturday. Saturday, September 30th. Saturday, this coming Saturday, September 30th. Amen? Amen. Um, please make a note that our uh, church anniversary our church anniversary is the third Sunday in October. Amen. And note the time, especially our culinary ministry, please note the time. That service will start at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. And so uh, we may have to do some special stuff to make sure that the food stay warm for our guests. Uh, our guests are coming from Niles, Michigan. All right. They're a long way from here. <laughs> so they're coming from way, way down yonder. And so we want to make sure that... Uh, we give them time to get here. So at 4 p.m. on uh, third Sunday in October, we will be celebrating 89 years at the Macedonia Church. My God, my God, my God. Um, one last thing I want to highlight to the congregation. Let me come down and this one. Um, I mentioned it to our leaders recently. I mentioned it to... Um, our Bible study um, students on Wednesday. And so I'm going to ask if you would please, as a church congregation, um, what I've noticed is, uh, well, let me go back. When my wife and I arrived here three years ago, that was actually a culture that was already set in the church. It was it was very well set. What we want to do, we want to keep that, that particular culture going. We don't want to change it. Uh, actually, what we want to do, we want to strengthen it. And the culture that we found when we got here it was very common, very common for one church member to say to another church member if they were speaking to them. For instance, we have uh, Miss Vera Simpson right here. Uh, if someone came up and spoke to her, they would say, Sister Vera Simpson or Miss Vera Simpson. And I think over the course of time, we probably have gotten a little lax or what I would say a little too common because in the church setting, we are a little too quick to call folks by their first name. And, and, and my, my, my forefathers would say it this way. You need to put a handle on that name. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so I'm going to ask, I know everybody know everybody. You know, it might be your sister, your brother. I know I know y'all tight like that. But as best you can in the church setting, let's be a little more formal. Let's be a little more respectful. Let's make sure if it's brother, put brother on there. If it's deacon, put deacon. If it's trustee, put trustee. If it's preacher, put preacher, pastor, whatever. Um, let's make sure that we're not quite as common with each other as we become. And here's why. We're not old fogey and all that. We ain't just trying to set rules that just to set rules. We have a generation that's coming up now who need to see the generation ahead of them actually practicing what you preach. Yeah. Oh we will quickly 
tell our young generation, well, y'all ain't got no respect. Y'all y'all just, just say anything, do anything. And so we have taken an intentional uh, effort here to make sure that we teach our young people, uh, especially in church, but away from church also, when you see an adult, uh, someone who is a little more aged, make sure you're saying Mr. or Miss or put some handle on it to show that respect. I had a young man come up to me at Vacation Bible School this year, 15 years old, as a matter of fact. He walked right up to me. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> and my first reaction was, well, you don't know me like that. <laughs> but I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But what it is is that we uh, we just need to train them. And training is not just telling them what to do. Training is actually showing them what to do. Which means we need to model what we want them to see. Okay? And so if you don't mind, just in this setting, and if you're in a social setting downstairs eating food and they're right across from you and y'all are doing something like that, okay, cool. But if I happen to put a mic in your hand, please don't call folks by their first name. That, that, that's all right, right? That's all right. So we, we ain't mad at you. We just love you. And we are getting better and better as a church. That's all. Amen. 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 If you're mad at me, hug me out the church. Because <laughs> if you hug me, I won't know you're mad at me. <laughs> just hug me out the church anyhow. Let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to give. Let's get ready to Amen. give. Amen. We're so glad that you are here today. Um, let me praise God. Hallelujah for my wife. Oh, my God. Let me also, as we're getting ready to give, once again thank everyone in the Macedonia family and vicinity for a wonderful Women's Day celebration last night. And so we, we thank God, and uh, I did get a chance to call uh, Hopewell Baptist Church in some part of Georgia. I don't even know how to pronounce the name of it. And just thank the, the pastor there for allowing Minister Robin Cage to come up and preach the word. Yeah. Uh, so thank God for that. Um, get your envelopes out and bless, bless the Lord. If you don't mind raising them up. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you. We raise our offering, our tithe into the air so that we are in agreement with each other and with you. That you have given us something today that we can give back to you to be obedient. Those hands that may be up that don't have anything, Lord, bless them. Go past their hand and go to their heart and see, Lord, that their heart is with you. And we're trusting you that you're going to give them something the next time that they'll have in their hands so that they can honor you with the rest of us. We worship you today in our giving. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We bless you. We glorify you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll start the giving off. Start followed by our deacons, our trustees. Then you, my sisters, and my Brothers, at this time, would you please stand face the wall and the usher will direct you from the rear.
verses number 25 through 34. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 through 34. As you will find in the scripture, I want to say how awesome it is that God has allowed Sister Katie Cage to be in the house this morning. Been in the hospital. Yeah. And she's in the house of the Lord today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I'll probably call the name of somebody else here real soon. Yeah. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 through 34. When you have it, say amen. amen. In the King James Version of the Bible, it says this. And at midnight, say midnight. Yeah. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. Say sang praises. Sang praises. Unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, say suddenly. suddenly. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the fountains of the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately say immediately, immediately. say all, all all the doors were open and say everyone, everyone everyone's bands or chains were loose and the keeper of the prison were awaken or awaken awakening out of his his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled but Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he cried, then he called for a light and sprang or ran and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Yes, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Right. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all his straightway. Yes, and when yes, he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. For a few moments, my brothers and my sisters, I want to preach from the sermon title, The Power of My Midnight Praise. The Power of My Midnight Praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Power of My Midnight Praise. We certainly give honor to God today, the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank God for this great music ministry that has ushered us into the presence of God this morning, Chosen Generation Youth Choir. We thank God for all of our youth workers, Sister Remisa Cage, especially for the time that she put in with our young people to get them ready to minister. We thank God for uh, each one of you, my sisters and my brothers. I thank God for my beautiful wife, Miss Justin McKenzie. Thank you for giving me them the cough drops too. <laughs> the power of my midnight praise. Watch this. <laughs> Most true believers may not realize that we have a praise that's different when it seems like the sun is shining. Yeah than we do when we're experiencing dark times. <laughs> when we talk about praise, what we're talking about is recognizing, acknowledging, and highlighting, and bragging on God for what he has done, Sister McGee, or what he's about to do. See, many of us praise God uh, then, uh, because we recognize that he has done some great things for us. Yeah. Or we praise God because we believe he's about to do some great things. Uh, we call those things, those times, uh, our sunshine praise. Uh, that's the one that everybody wants when the sun is, is shining. Uh, that's where all is well in your world. 
And you have a smile on your face with the song says, smile. You have a smile on your face. You have a pep in your step. You have a positive word on your lips. It seems like you got the whole world in your hand. As a matter of fact, you'll probably go around singing the song. I got the whole world in my hand. You'll sing the song. You, you have everything under control. Your sunshine praise may also be called daylight praise, morning praise, or daytime praise. And you're writing scripture now. You're writing scripture when you're there. Because I read in the scripture in Psalms 30 and verse 5. I read the scripture says, For his anger endures for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. See, when morning comes, you got a morning time. You got a sunlight praise. And that's where everybody wants to be. You're still in scripture. You're still in scripture because I read Psalms 84 and 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Uh -huh. The Lord will give grace and glory. Yes, Sister Tina Blair, I'm reading it kind of slow. No good thing will he withhold from them on, that walk uprightly. Yeah. See, you are in scripture when you are actually praising God for your sunshine and praise. Uh, I read the scripture in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21 through 24. It says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies yes, that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. When you have a sunshine praise, you are in scripture. When things are going well, you are supposed to give God praise. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyhow. You are right up in scripture. See, this is our sunlight experiences. When everything is everything, family is good, health is good, marriage is good, finances are good, you don't mind telling the whole world it's all good. As a matter of fact, tell your neighbor it's all good. But then there's a time for a believer that moves from sunshine to not just night, but midnight. Midnight for a believer is when uh, things went sideways on you. And it seemed like you don't know how to get your way out of it. It's when you are doing what you were supposed to do and life beat you up anyhow. It's the trouble, uh, it's when trouble is everywhere on every turn in your life and in spite of your best efforts, you still call a case. In spite of your best efforts, your, son, your daughter still got pregnant. In spite of your best efforts, your son still won't do right. In spite of your best efforts, your marriage still ended in divorce court. In spite of your best effort, you still can't get a good paying job. In spite of your best effort, you still can't afford a house. In spite of your best effort, your loved one still died. In spite of your best effort, your blood pressure is still high. In spite of your best efforts, your cancer still came back. In spite of your best effort, your mind is still slipping. In spite of your best effort, you are still single when you want to be married. In spite of your best effort, you are still angry. In spite of your best effort, you still got baby mama drama. In spite of your best effort, you still have a baby daddy who won't take care of his responsibilities. You still can't catch a break. See, this is the time when the sun ain't shining and it's, it's not morning time for you anymore. It's night time and it ain't just night time, it's midnight. Am I talking to anybody? blown midnight at this point. Yet, even at midnight, I saw in the Bible that our lives are supposed to still give him praise. The Bible says in Psalms 34 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Even when it's midnight, you still got to give him praise. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20. It says, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to give him praise even in your midnight even though midnight is actually up on you. Colossians 3.17 And whatsoever 
You do it word or in deed. Yes, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, yes, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And guess what? If that didn't grab you, yes, even if you're going through a midnight situation, as I speak to you right now, yes. 1 Corinthians 5.18 is still in the Bible. Yes. It says, in everything, yes. give thanks. Yes. But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. See, I want you to know when life happens, it's not just dark in your life, but you are actually experiencing a midnight situation, but you still have to praise him. Don't turn your praise off just because your problem got bigger. When the problem get bigger, your situation get darker, don't run from it. Don't get mad. Don't back up off of it. If don't come miserable. Go ahead and give a midnight praise. Lord have mercy, Jesus. In our text, in our text, in our text, in our text, text Acts chapter 16, mm -hmm. uh, we find where Paul and Silas yes, sir. are in prison. All right. Now, many of you Bible scholars know that by the time we get to Acts chapter 16, uh -huh. And we're seeing Paul and Silas in prison. Yes, sir. You know we had to pass by Acts chapter 12. Yeah. Where we saw Peter uh, yes, in prison. Yes, sir. But Peter and Paul's prison experience was a little different. Yes, right. Watch this. Um, he was, they were in prison yeah. for doing ministry. Uh -huh. wow. Wow. Your takeaway right there. Is that even if you are doing right, you can still get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Somebody came up in the church one day and sold a big old fat lie. Mm -hmm. What they said, uh, Reverend McCovery, they said was, mm -hmm. if you just stay on the Lord's side, everything going to be all right. Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell you, everything ain't all right all the time. Because Paul and Silas, the reason they actually got put in prison, yes, here's how the story goes. They showed up at a lady's house by the name of Lydia. Lydia actually worshipped God, but she didn't know who God really was. They explained God to Lydia, and Lydia got saved and got baptized. They left Lydia's house and went out to pray, Reverend John E. Simpson. They prayed, and watch this, uh, they actually got to pray and a woman with a spirit of divination yes, actually started following them, mm. yelling out to them, talking about these are the servants of God mm. who yes, can sir. tell us how to get saved. Yes, and watch this. They, she did this day after day until Paul got irritated with her. Mm. Can I teach you right there? Yes, Even yes, folks sir. that act like they saying something good can get on your nerves. <laughs> And the Bible says that he called that, div that spirit of divination out of her. And because now she didn't have this spirit of divination, she couldn't be a fortune teller. I hope I ain't talking to no fortune tellers up in here. But I want you to know that if you are telling the fortune and it ain't by the spirit of God, you are wrong. You are actually evil and you need to get that thing up out of you. Lord have mercy, Jesus. But I want you to know that as soon as she wasn't able to make money for somebody, can I teach you right there? See, some people will use your little talents to make money for themselves. You got to be careful allowing other people to use you for their own benefit. But she didn't have the ability to make no money. Now, the guy who was really her pimp, he got mad and told the police, he told the popo, you got to do something about this guy Paul and Silas because he's teaching something that we're not even allowed to follow. And the police said, you know what, put him in prison. Put them in prison. And don't just put them in prison. Put them in the inner prison. And the, the prison guard took them, took them in the prison and put them in stock. What that means, they put chains on their feet. Then we arrive at verse number 25. And all of a sudden, out of all of this madness that's been happening, it says, and at midnight. Yeah. And at midnight. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. And it's right there where I want the sermon to pick up all right. to show us the power of a midnight praise. Yeah. Because many of us, this very week, have gone through life, and life has been kicking our you-know-what. Yes, and we found ourselves at that point called midnight. See, you didn't call it that. I can, can I tell you what you called it? You called it hell. But I'm going to clean it up a little bit. You found yourself 
at this thing called midnight. And based on where you are, if you are a born again believer, I want to actually show you the power of a midnight praise. Is that all right? Point number one. Right there in verse number 25 and through 27, I believe. Watch this. Your point number one, 25 and 26. It says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your point number one, three displays of power of a midnight praise. Your point number one, how your midnight praise displays power. Point number one, y'all ready? Uh, y'all sure you're ready? Is your midnight praise yes, gives relief mm -hmm. to undeserved problems. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. It gives relief to and in undeserved problems. Yes, Let me see if I can holler at you. Yes, I just told you that Paul and Silas were put in prison or doing ministry. They weren't doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And they got in trouble. Uh, mm. Sister Justine McKenzie, it's one thing mm. to get in trouble because you did something. Yes, and at least you can handle the fact that I deserve what I'm getting because I did something to cause something to happen. But it's a whole other monster when someone get mad with you and accuse you and harm you in any way they think they can and you know you didn't do nothing wrong. See, that is an undeserved problem. But I want you to know that even if you find yourself in trouble and you are in a situation but you didn't deserve it I still want to encourage you my brothers and my sisters to go ahead and give a praise right where you are it doesn't mean that your problem ain't real problem because if you ain't figured it out folks can cause some serious problems in your life they can actually help you get to a midnight situation but if you are actually experiencing life's problems, but you didn't deserve it, let me hurry up and encourage you with a midnight praise. Watch this, Reverend McCovery. Those of you who know that you are doing everything humanly possible to follow God's word and to follow his law and to be the best Christian that you can be, but you find hell on every side. Every time you turn around, it's trouble and so much more trouble. You go, go out your house, it's trouble. You come in the house, it's trouble. You turn the TV on, it's trouble. Everywhere you look around, it's trouble. If that's you, I want you to know that you are actually in a great spot. Can I tell you why, Sister Joe, you're in a great spot? If that is your midnight, and it's an undeserved problem. Here's what I want you to know. That God has allowed you to experience trouble in a place so that you can actually take your praise into the situation where you are and give your problem some praise that otherwise it wouldn't have had the opportunity to get there. You ain't telling me. They put Paul and Silas in prison. Not just in prison, the scripture says to Sister Tina, in a prison. They took him deep down in a dungeon. If he didn't go through what he went through, the people on 
the inside of the prison would never have the opportunity to see someone handle a midnight situation. See, what you don't know is that many times what you are going through ain't got nothing to do with you. Somebody need to see you experience what they are experiencing but handle it differently. They couldn't go into the prison and tell the, the, uh, the, the inmates it's going to be alright. How do you know? You ain't up in here. But if you up in here and now you singing praises to God, now I got you. I can handle that. You didn't deserve it because it was actually not a problem. It was your assignment. I'm not talking to anybody. And so God will not leave you in an undeserved problem if you mess around and give him a midnight praise. Sister Nakisha, I need you to know that if you have an undeserved problem, you're simply in the situation and it's midnight because your assignment is not up yet. So right from your midnight undeserved problem, give him praise. The biggest problem that I see in church is that we have victorious Christians on Sunday morning in the sanctuary. But midnight comes and instead of praising God, you the very first one that shouted out your wig on Sunday morning and you can't even remember God's name when trouble comes. Lord have mercy be. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody don't know me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's an undeserved problem. But he'll give you relief. Can you see the relief? Because when he praised God at midnight, the Bible says that there was a great earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken. Then immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. I'm here to tell you that if you can mess around and give a praise in your midnight when it's an undeserved problem, you will mess around and start shaking some stuff loose from you. Everything ain't designed to hold you back. All you got to do is use that key called praise up in here and you'll mess around and shake some stuff off of you. See, some of you around and dealing with stuff that you should have shook off a long time ago. The only thing you got to do is give it some praise. Even at your darkest hour, just give it some praise. And if you mess around and praise him, stuff will start falling off of you. I'm not talking to anybody up in here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless his holy name. Your point number two. The power of your midnight praise. It gives relief in an undeserved problem. Yes, but it also mm -hmm. rescues unlikely people. Yes. It rescues unlikely people. Now y'all stay with me on this one. This is verse number 27 through 30. It says, And the keepers of the prison awake, awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had being fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Um, then he called for a light and sprang in and said, and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sir, what must I do to be saved? Your midnight praise has the power to rescue unlikely people. Let me show you something. In verse number 25, it says something that obviously y'all missed. Because y'all didn't like, uh. Y'all didn't like, hmm. You didn't raise your hand like, no, Reverend, you, you missed something in there. You ain't, you ain't pointing it out. 
Watch this, Sister Tina. Verse number 25 says something. It says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Listen, you missed it again. You missed it again. Um, your midnight praise has the power to rescue unlikely people. Watch this. Uh, in verse number 25, you had prisoners who actually heard the men of God praying and singing. Yes, and the Bible says that there, there was an earthquake and their chains were broken and all the doors were loose. They benefited from the what the men of God was doing when the men of God praised. But Brother Andre Langston, watch this. This is what you miss. Watch this. You find in verse 25 where the prisoners heard them. You find in verse 26 where their chains fell off and the doors were open. But then you find in verse 27 to verse 30 where the prison guard was awakened. In other words, he never heard them say anything, but he was the one who responded to the call of Christ. I want you to know that the Bible does not say not one prisoner got saved that night. The Bible doesn't even say that not one prisoner joined into praise. What am I trying to tell you? See, sometimes those of us with our church look on, those are not the ones that are actually going to heed the call. See, we come up in here, we be faking it till we make it. We put on our Sunday morning knees. And we are hearing the gospel every single week. And we act like the preacher ain't saying nothing. I'm up here sweating and losing my voice. And you talking about he ain't doing nothing. He ain't entertaining me. Like this is Showtime at the Apollo. Like this is the Gong Show. But I want to know, I want you to know that that may be a drunk dealer walking down the street. And that's the same one that will hear the gospel. And while you up here trying to figure out whether he's preaching or not, that'll be the one that will accept the call of Jesus Christ. Your call at midnight you an unlikely person am I talking to everybody up in here it was the prison guard and the bible says he awakening out of his sleep he did not hear Paul and Silas praying or singing praise but the ones who heard it the only thing they did was heard it they was up in there being entertained. They was up in there getting all of the good blessings just because they was in the number. Now, I ain't mad at you if you're in the number. And if you stay close to some of us up in here, God is doing some blessing with some splash on it. You will mess around and get a blessing if you mess around and stay close. But I don't know about you. I know a God who has a blessing with my name on it. I don't just want no splash. I want my own stuff. I want him to know
The power of a midnight praise. Can I give you point number three? You ready for point number three? You ready for point number three? Are you ready for point number three? Your point number one was that you get relief in an undeserved problem. Your point number two, it rescues unlikely people. Your point number three, it will reach unimaginable places. Verse number 31 through 34. When y'all get ready, stay tight with me. Verse number 31, it says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in the house. And he took them the same hour of the midnight, and washed their stripes, and was baptized. He and all his. The power of a midnight praise reaches unimaginable places. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch this. Come on. Paul and Silas praising God at the worst point of their lives caused a person who some would say would never accept the gospel. But it didn't just get to him. It reached into his whole household. Let me talk to some families tonight. Some of us have some family members that we've been praying for for a long time. And even in our prayers, watching them do what they know they shouldn't do, that has become a midnight force. But can you imagine that God himself is actually using your praise at midnight not to just reach mama and them, not to just reach daddy and them, not to just reach auntie and uncle and them, but the Bible says his whole house got saved. Could it be? Could it be? That the reason your family members are not in the house today yes, is because you are unwilling to give a midnight praise at your darkest hour. Yes, when it got really bad for Paul and for Silas, they didn't complain, they didn't cuss, they didn't get angry, they didn't get weary. What they did, they went down mm -hmm. yeah. on their knees. Yeah. And I can imagine going back to old school church. Yeah. Them old deacons down on their knees down in Alabama and Mississippi. They didn't have all the education that we may have today. But they were found on their knees every Sunday morning in the church. And they may not have been able to say it as sophisticated as some may say today. So their prayers may have sounded something like this. God, I stretch my hand to thee. I stand before you as a bad child, before a good parent. I'm so thankful that this morning I didn't wake up on my cooling board. But I woke up with the blood running warm in my veins. God, I don't know all the words to say, but I know it's midnight right now. And if I know that it's midnight, I know you are right here with me. Because you are not just the God of the sunshine. You are the God of the midnight hour. And because you are the God of the midnight hour, I need you, Lord. I need you right here, right now. I need you up in this jail cell. 
if you can have a sane moment just for one time in your life, all you got to do is say, thank you, Jesus. I praise you. I glorify you. I know that you are Lord and you are master of my life. I don't care what I'm going through because I'd rather go through with you than to be at peace by myself. I want you to know that you can muster up a midnight praise. Everything is going to be all right with you. Everything is going to be all right with who's next to you. And everything is going to be all right with your family. So I know I got some praises in the house. Somebody been praying for somebody for a long time. Somebody been dealing with some family situations for a long time. And you don't know how else to do it. You ought to just take about good 15, 20 seconds right now and start praising God. If you give a crazy praise today, God is going to do some something. God is going to rescue some people. God is going to reach some places. And it's going to be for his glory. I don't know about you, but I thank you, God. I worship you today, God. You are wonderful. You are counselor. You are mighty God. You are everlasting Father. You are Prince of Peace. And we worship you today. It ain't good for me today, but I'm good with you today. And I say thank you. You ought to clap your hands and give me praise. Thank you. You know when I stand to your feet. The power of midnight praise. Many of us, we are and have experienced some midnights in our lives. The typical person, typical, common, regular, normal, would say, I'm going through. So I'm going to take some time off to get myself together. And what you are actually saying is that, Jesus, I'm going to go further into the darkness. I'm going to rely on my own abilities. I'm going to suffer whatever I need to suffer. And that's what it is. But we are saying, no, my brother. No, my sister, if you're going through something and it's gotten really, really bad, this is the best time to give God glory, yes. honor, yes. and praise. Yes. Don't, you know, don't, you know, don't you know that anybody can praise him when things are going good? Yes. When you're uh, pockets are full of money, all the bills are paid, food, refrigerator full of food, clothes all up in the closet and scattered everywhere, two cars in the driveway, job working pretty good, you can set your own hours, do kind of what you want to do, make them pay you, and you ain't going to go to work, and if you go to work, you ain't going to work too hard because they should man, they should pay you some You got all them benefits. Anybody can praise them then. But can you praise them? When the doctor tells you, you got six months to leave. Get your affairs in order. Can you praise him when your daughter comes home and tells you, Mama, Daddy, I made a mistake. I'm pregnant. And I don't even know where the daddy is. Can you still praise him when you are strung out on drugs? and addicted to alcohol right. and you've tried over and over and over again and nothing seems to work yes. Yes. can you still praise him yes. when things always go against you yes. and seem to go all the time for somebody else yes. can you still praise him when your kids are out of control and you know it yes. can you still praise him when you love somebody but they ain't good for you yes. Can you still praise him when all the life's problems, even though you didn't deserve it, has come down on you? Can you still praise him? Yeah. I submit to you that if you are on the Lord's side, yeah. you can praise him. Yeah. So then the question obviously come up, are you on the Lord's side? Yeah. And so every believer in this house, I need you praying. I need you praying. And to those who 
know that the reason you haven't been able to do all of what this sermon has said yes. is because you hadn't been real with God. Amen. You've been a sunshiny believer, but midnights don't work well for you. And you know that you have to get on his team and do it his way to be able to do what this sermon said. Yes. If you know that you're not saved and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's your first step right there. Yes. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus yes. and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it said you shall be saved. That right there is already causing the sun to come out in your life. Yes. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, here's your opportunity. We offer you the opportunity to enter a relationship with Jesus Christ. Are you here today? Are you here today? That call is still on the table. Let me throw another one on there. You're saved, but you don't have a church home. You don't have a place that has uh, a pastor who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. You don't have a place that has a church family who will love on you and provoke you to love and to good work. You don't have a place where you can discover your purpose and reach your destiny. If that's you and you need a church home, I offer you the opportunity to come and be a part of this local assembly called Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah. Or whatever church you know that God is leading you to. Are you here today? Because that stuff is eating on the inside of you. Yeah. 
And we gave an example in new members class this morning. Y'all remember that commercial? The scrubbing bubbles, they spray their little bubbles and they go to working. Yeah. That's how the word works for you. If you mess around and, and actually allow the word to get all the way down in your in, in your gullet, y'all know what I'm talking about. Folks from down south. That thing yeah. will start scrubbing some stuff up out of you. Yeah. And it'll make you clean yeah. from the inside out. Yeah. If you're here today, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. If you're here today, come on. Are you here? Are you here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you don't mind taking a seat just for a second, I want to do something. I need to do something. Um, I need a chair. Um, Sister Ranisha, Sister Stephanie, y'all come on back. Sister Mary Ann. Come on. Um, any of the mothers that are physically able to, I need you to come stand with me just for a second. Any of the mothers that are physically able to, and if you are not physically able to, just be with us in the spirit. And I know you already asked, well, who are the mothers? Yeah, if you're a mother, I ain't got to tell you, just come on with me. <laughs> Oh, Sister Melissa, Sister Melissa um, was supposed to have a procedure that was to clear up blockage on both sides. One side is blocked ninety percent. The other side is blocked like 70%. And that was supposed to happen this Friday. But the determination was that her heart is too weak for the operation right now. And because it's midnight for her. So God is the specializer of hearts. 
Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for Sister Melissa. We thank you, God, that you have allowed her to experience a midnight. But you've given us an example in your word that at midnight we ought to pray and sing praises. And so now, God, we are praying. I can hear the saints praying right now. And, Lord, we want you to go ahead and cause an earthquake to come. Not a literal one, but one in her arteries that will actually unblock some things. You move chains off of people's feet in the inner prison. And so now move this uh, blockage from both sides of her, her body. Strengthen her heart right now. Let her see that you are on her side. Let her feel your power right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, no fear is in her right now. For we have praise and the praise will outweigh fear all day long. So we thank you right now that at midnight we're ready now to relieve her in an undeserved problem. Lord, we're ready to have her to be rescued as an unlikely person. But Lord, we know that you're able to reach unimaginable places. So reach down inside her right now in the name of Jesus. Strengthen this heart right now in the name of Jesus. Heal her body in the name of Jesus. Strengthen her mind in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood. This is war right now. And we plead the blood on this situation right now in the name of Jesus. We call forth healing in the name of Jesus. From the crown of her head all the way to the soles of her feet. We believe, God, that thou right now you are moving in a mighty way. And Lord, let the doctors confirm it, but we believe it already. So we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We're going to shout about it right now. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. We give your name praise. We receive a healing right now in the name of Jesus. We bless your holy name. And not just her, all across the house. And everybody that's standing in the gap for a family member right now. We claim healing. We claim deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. We cry, cry, we call for comfort for those who are going through the bereavement process because you are God who will dry every tear from our eyes. Lord, we thank you right now. We honor you today. We love you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you right now. Please stand as we leave from this place. But never your presence, God. We leave with a praise on our lips. We leave with a song in our heart. And Lord, we will never be the same because our problems are in trouble because we're willing to give a midnight praise. We thank you right now. We glorify you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Call somebody tell them you love them. Hallelujah. My God, my God.